Generations in the future can expect lots of new findings and adventures in our solar system. Humans are already preparing to leave the safety of our home planet and explore other worlds out there. Some may end up living and working on the Moon and Mars, like how researchers go to those special stations in Antarctica. We're working on super-powerful rockets and spacecraft, too. Some of those might even run on futuristic technologies like fusion or super-efficient electric engines. That means it might take our descendants just a few weeks to reach Mars, instead of months and months of staring through the window of their spaceship and wondering if they're even on the right path or if they've gotten lost along the way. Maybe they'll be able to get to some faraway spots, like the Kuiper Belt or Pluto, within only one year. Of course, Mars is especially interesting now. But who knows what stages of human missions we will witness during our lifetime. Today, NASA plans to send humans to Mars in the 2030s. Developing adequate technologies and building a space station in lunar orbit are just some of the stages they need to cover. And even if they do manage to send people to the red planet, the next step will be making sure they can survive and really live there. Hopefully, astronauts going there won't be lovers of outdoor activities because they'll have to spend most of their time in special units because outside conditions on Mars are really tough. They'll have everything they need inside, of course. It's not like there's a store or a neighbor to stop by when they run out of sugar or, I don't know, oxygen. As you're watching this video, NASA and other organizations are already on their way to developing prototypes for such habitats. It's necessary to be able to build them out of local resources, like Martian soil, so that we can bring fewer things from Earth. And those who go there will also be able to extract water from the Martian soil, together with carbon dioxide, which they can later use to produce oxygen. Future generations will finally witness finding life somewhere else in space. Life starts developing when the conditions are right, but we're still not sure what it really takes for new organisms to appear. Sure, they need water and other building blocks, but we don't know what conditions simple cells need to develop further and grow into, let's say, entire civilizations. Planetary systems, like the one we have, with four rocky planets, four ice and gas giants, and an asteroid gap, are rare, so we don't have other examples we can learn from. For life to develop, is it necessary to have a big moon that stabilizes the tilt of your planet? We take it for granted. But things like that could be one of the main reasons why we're even here. In the next 50 years, we might find evidence of life somewhere beyond our planet. It doesn't necessarily mean little green creatures we see in memes and movies. It could be more like hints of life, such as certain chemicals or processes that tell us life is or used to be there. Kids from the future will know more about the early stages of the universe, too. Or they'll find out which objects were the first to appear after the Big Bang. The James Webb Space Telescope has already shown us the first galaxies. They had been hotter, brighter, larger, and faster than we expected. Plus, we're still not sure why there's a supermassive black hole in the center of almost every galaxy, or how they grow so big so quickly. There's still so much that we don't know about dark energy and dark matter, either. We believe dark energy pushes galaxies, and everything they contain, apart, while dark matter pulls and keeps them together. These are the forces that make up about 95% of our universe. But all we know about them so far is how their gravitational pull affects ordinary matter. It's hard to imagine we'll really get to know them better. But around 50 years ago, when the Astronomy magazine was founded, nobody had a clue about such things as dark energy, fast radio bursts, or exoplanets that are everywhere in the cosmos. So kids from the future will be familiar with such cosmic things that we can't even imagine or name now. Decades from now, we'll have a really big radio telescope placed on the side of the Moon that faces away from Earth. This telescope will help us listen to space signals without any interference from those coming from our own radios and devices on Earth. We'll also be able to hear signals at very low frequencies that can't get through the outer layer of our atmosphere today. 
This telescope will be super high-tech and mostly controlled by computers. Everything in this observatory will be done remotely. In the next 10 years, there will be a substantial change in radio telescopes on Earth as well. They help us study space using radio waves. Right now, we have powerful radio telescopes, like the original Very Large Array built in the 1970s. There are also two new projects in construction, one in Australia and South Africa, and the other in North America. Those are super-advanced telescopes that will level up the game of discovering new things in space. They'll be finished in about 50 years, so we may still see the results of their work. Humans are getting more successful at launching things into space, and it might seem like we'd get better results if we send such telescopes into space. But the best way to do it is only when it's necessary, because it's still easier and cheaper to keep upgrading telescopes here on Earth. There will also be changes in something called gravitational waves. Astronomers get excited when they detect some of them coming from space. But in about 50 years, they expect to get hundreds of these signals every week coming from all sorts of space objects. They're not able to detect these signals right now because they don't have super cool telescopes, such as the Cosmic Explorer and LISA yet. When the life of a massive star ends, it dramatically explodes in a supernova. And it's a space event of epic proportions. The last time we witnessed one of those in our galaxy was almost 400 years ago. That was too long ago. We needed more. Based on what we know about the size of our galaxy, we should see such events every 50 to 100 years. We're not sure why we miss them all the time, but at least future generations may be lucky enough to see these space shows. The far future is likely to be more dramatic than all this, though. In the next million years, giant stars scientists are observing now will explode in magnificent supernovas. People on Earth will be able to see them. Surely, someone will decide to stay at home instead of going on some intergalactic trip. These events will make it look as if our planet has two suns, because the supernovas will be brighter than the moon. Now, here's some sad news. Solar eclipses will end in 600 million years. The moon moves a little bit away from Earth each year. And hundreds of millions of years from now, it'll be too small to stand in the sun's way. And here's something not even hardcore adventurers would like to witness – a collision of galaxies. Right now, the Milky Way and our neighbor galaxy Andromeda, which is 2,537 light-years away, are moving through space towards each other. They will meet in about 3.75 billion years. And out of chaos, a new giant galaxy called Milkdromeda will be born. Nah, I won't be around then. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.